Good Monday. I'm Aaliyah. Welcome to Monday Morning Jolt. Let's get started. Good morning. With us here today is uh, Aaron Brown. And Aaron Brown is one of the founders of Impact 52, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And Impact, besides Impact 52, Aaron is a speaker mm -hmm. and author. You're coming up with this, this new book, yes. right? And mm -hmm. recently did a Kickstarter project. Yes. Right? Yes. And um, tell us, what is this Impact 52? Impact 52 is a family service project where my family and I volunteer with a different nonprofit organization or cause every week of the year. Mm -hmm. So each week we find an organization, we go and we volunteer our time. Mm -hmm. We then use a blog and social media to share the experiences mm -hmm. in the hopes that we can inspire other families, other individuals to take action in their community. So today we've actually completed uh, about 98 weeks, I think. It's hard to keep track, mm -hmm. um, but I believe we've completed 98 mm -hmm. weeks of service with more than 85 different organizations. Oh, that's wonderful. And you, you are also an avid blogger, right? I am. You blog often. Yes. I, with our Impact 52 project, we typically blog you know, two or three times a week sharing stories. Mm -hmm. Our stories, but we also like to share the posts of other people who are volunteering because again we want to we want to create an epidemic of giving so it's not solely about what we do mm -hmm. it's about what other people are doing so we want to shine the light on as mm -hmm. as many of those stories as possible mm -hmm. can you give us an example of some of the organizations you volunteer for oh wow there's there's, there's so, so many, many. <laughs> i mean you know 80 some different organizations but you know the fort wayne pet food pantry and organizations like big brothers big sisters and the boys and girls club and then you have organizations like the uh, Sexual Assault Treatment Center, mm -hmm. which is one that a lot of people don't know exists in our community because it's, it's hard for them to market, right? Because you're talking mm -hmm. about abuse and you're talking about rape. And so when someone wants to, a donor wants to give their money, mm -hmm. you have organizations that, oh, look at what we do, we save animals, or hey, we mentor kids, or we deal with rape. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's just something that people don't want to talk about. So mm -hmm. um, you know, those are just a few of the organizations, but you know, we've you know, coming up, I'm volunteering at a middle school, you know, during, during one of their projects with the kids. So the idea is really just to show people that there are a wide array of ways that you can get involved in your community and make a difference. I like that. That's really neat. So um, you were also a TED speaker, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I spoke at TEDx Fort Wayne what, last what, year. What was the topic? Last year, the theme of the entire day was rethink. Mm -hmm. And so I shared the Impact 52 story mm -hmm. and talked about creating that epidemic of giving. And then my challenge to those in attendance was mm -hmm. about rethinking how you spend your time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's 168 hours in a week. Mm -hmm. We all can make one or two hours. I mean, you're only talking about 1% about of your time. Mm -hmm. If we could give one hour a week to helping people, and so we really have to rethink what our priorities are, mm -hmm. how much TV we watch, how much time we spend on social media, all of those things. If we rethink, mm -hmm. and so that was my message: is really trying to challenge those in attendance that mm -hmm. you know you can do more. Stop making excuses and take some action. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your book. What is this? What is, what is is it going to be about? Well, it's called Lenny May's New Friends, mm -hmm. and it's the first. It's a children's book. Mm -hmm. It's the first in a series of books, mm -hmm. but this one really talks about the homeless. Mm -hmm. And so it follows a young girl, she's nine, and she has society's general stereotypes of homeless people. Mm -hmm. They're losers, they're bums, they don't help themselves, why would anyone want to help them? Mm -hmm. And through a night of volunteerism with her family, mm -hmm. she meets some intriguing people, mm -hmm. she hears some interesting stories, and she really makes that connection that really all people are people, right? Homeless people are people just like you and I. Mm -hmm. In an instant, we all could be homeless. One, one life event, losing a job or your house setting fire or you know, losing a loved one to cancer or something could send you down a path that, that lead to homelessness. And so she really learns mm -hmm. that I shouldn't judge. I shouldn't pass judgment without really knowing the story. And that's what we hope that children will learn. So who would want to get this book? Like, is it for children? Or it is, is a it... children's book. I mean, we're, we're, we're targeting, you know, ages 6 to 10. Mm -hmm. um, we believe, and I personally believe, that children at a young age need to learn about homelessness, first of all, mm -hmm. and that they also need to learn that lesson about not passing judgment. Mm -hmm. Whether it's someone who's homeless or a classmate who 
doesn't have the nicest shoes mm -hmm. or doesn't have the coolest phone. Mm -hmm. You know, kids tend to pick on and, and make judgment, pass judgment based on what they see, kind of that whole adage of, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. We really need to teach children that at a young age. So this book is a children's picture book mm -hmm. and uh, we hope to be able to reach children. Mm -hmm. We also believe that parents who will sit down and read this mm -hmm. with their children can also get that lesson that all people are people and that we shouldn't pass judgment. So we really believe though it's a children's book that we can really capture and teach this lesson to a lot of people. Sounds like a family book. So it is. It, it's it for is. families and, and... And it's written by family. Yeah. I mean, it's based on our experience of helping the homeless here in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. And my children, my wife, they helped when we started developing the main character. We all picked what color hair, what type of hair. I mean, it is. Yeah. it was my children and my wife helped write the book. So it is, it is really a family project that for is, families. I, I like that. That sounds neat. That sounds really neat. <laughs> Can you um, tell us why Mondays are great for you? Mondays are great because it's the start of a new week and for me I look at that as a new week is full of new opportunities to positively impact people. So Monday is, is the start of, of an opportunity to, to seize those moments where I can make a difference in the lives of other people. That's a good point. I don't think I've heard anyone make that point. Yeah, that's well, what I love about it. it. I like that point. Yeah, su that Sunday point. night, I mean, I, I really start thinking, well, it's a new week. And, yeah. and it, well, what am I going to be able to do this week to make a difference in the lives of others, including my kids, my wife, you know, the people around me. But, you know, I really want it to be in the right frame of mind that I don't want to miss any opportunity to make a connection with someone during the week where maybe I can offer a helping hand, some kind words, or maybe just a smile. The smile is good. What do you do to kickstart your Mondays? Wow, what do I do to kickstart my Mondays? You know, I, I think it's just, it, it, more so than anything, it's just me taking you know, that five minutes by myself to really just get my mind. You know, I don't sleep a lot. It seems like Mondays, I, Sunday nights I never <laughs> sleep. You know, so Mondays I'm always tired. Um, <laughs> so I take that first few minutes when I get out of bed and really just kind of get my mind right. And, and I'm not going to let the fact that, um, you know, I'm tired, keep me from being in the right frame of mind. And, mm -hmm. and because, you know, that, that could put my children off to a bad start of the week. If I'm yeah. tired and I'm, you know, I'm in a bad mood, mm -hmm. you know, they might then go to school being in a bad mood because of the way I interacted with them. So I, I really try to take a few minutes in the morning to kind of clear out the cobwebs, kind of get my <laughs> mind in the right place. And, and I used to say, hey, I kick, off, kick my Monday off with a large, you know, like 44 ounce. Mm -hmm. Soda, but I've cut out soda, so um, <laughs> so now it's you know, a lot of sweet tea. But but it's really just about getting my mind right first thing in the morning. So Aaron, like this show, we are targeting mostly business people. Mm -hmm. So I, I know you are doing this on a personal level, mm -hmm. but it is a business. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice can you give businesses? so that they can have their Monday better with, you know, like some of the projects that you are doing, mm -hmm. how can they like adjust it to make, make an impact or make it better? Sure. Well, I think the first thing is really as, as a business, you have to think about your own employees. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're, in the, if you're in the mind that I'm going to positively impact my employees, mm -hmm. that's the first start, right? If you can build relationships with your employees and that you're going to focus on positive interactions. You know, as a business leader, you can affect mm -hmm. your employee's dinner conversation. Mm -hmm. When they go home and sit down at dinner with True. their significant yeah. other, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they say, oh, how was your day? Mm -hmm. You can control that conversation if you have positive, you know, or negative, I mean, if you, if you have really negative interactions with your employees, mm -hmm. you're really going to affect that conversation. Well, today was terrible because you know, Aaron did this and did that, and now they're in a, maybe they're in a bad mood, and now they're having that, that attitude is a with their family. Way to look at it yeah. because it does it, it rolls down to the wife, to the kids, and, and so on, yes. or to the husband and the kids. And so I think business leaders really need to think about that. They really need That's to think. I, I want to. Yes, you have to hold people accountable. You have yeah. to. You, know, you have to have rules. I mean, you have to make sure people are doing their job, mm -hmm. but. Amongst all that, there are still opportunities to treat your people right, to you know, to value your employees, and really focus on trying to have positive impact with your employees. Because mm -hmm. morale goes up, productivity yeah. goes up, mm -hmm. and it's just amazing the shift that you can see in a business mm -hmm. if you just really focused on making a positive impact on your employees. Very true. Very true. It's very true. 
And do you have an adage by which you live your life by? I'm hearing a lot of different ones. I have a lot, but, yeah. but the number one thing is be outstanding. And so the idea is, no matter how bad things get, I'm always going to be outstanding. So, I mean, almost anybody who knows me, if they say, hey, how are you today? 99.999% of the time, I will tell them I'm outstanding, no matter how bad the day is. Because people are watching. You know, as a parent, my children are watching. So if I'm in a, in a bad attitude and my mind's not right, they see that, mm -hmm. you know, as a business leader, as a community member, people see that. Mm -hmm. And a lot more people are watching than we think. And so those yeah. people who, who are watching, they take on the same attitude. And so every morning, that's the message to my children. Be outstanding today. Mm -hmm. And it's not solely about, hey, go out and be the best student or be the best athlete. It's be the best attitude. Be the person that other people want to be around. Because if my children are the people that ch other children want to be around or that teachers want to teach. Yeah. I mean, if, if I'm that person, I can have influence, right? Because the people who want to be around me, they value my opinion, mm -hmm. they value my advice, they want to be there, then I can have influence and ultimately I can have impact. So it's really just, you know, live your life outstanding that, that there's no hurdle that we can't jump. Mm -hmm. there, you know, times will, will be tough and mm -hmm. life is not easy, but if we maintain the right attitude, Especially around other people, that we, we, you know, it's just it's just the way to live is to always be outstanding. I don't think we've ever got that answer. I guess I'm a little bit different. No, I, I love it. <laughs> that's, that's good, right? So, Aaron, if you were to have a superpower, what would that be? A superpower. Yeah. Oh, you are the super. You are the. That's a good question. You know, I think one of those things might be to slow down time mm -hmm. so that I could give more. I mean, I, I, we've, we've devoted our lives to, to giving and volunteering and, and trying to help people. And we've had a huge impact. Mm -hmm. it's one family mm -hmm. in, in Fort Wayne, Indiana is, is having a global impact. I and mean, we've had over 85 countries read our blog posts. Mm -hmm. We've received mm -hmm. emails from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So. Life's busy, you know. I mean, I have children who are involved in sports and school activities. But it's and, fulfilling. Yeah, oh, it's very fulfilling. And so, if I had a superpower to where I might be able to slow down time so that I could give more, I mean, ultimately, I think I could impact and reach more people. So, mm -hmm. so maybe, it, maybe my superpower would be to slow down time. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share something with us that would surprise people who think they know you? Surprise people? I, I don't know. I, you know, I put most everything out there. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of people if they don't follow our blog that, you know, I mean I'm six foot nine, so I'm 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 a mutant from a size standpoint. <laughs> um, but I I I'm a kid at heart and I mean if you don't follow our project you wouldn't know that I've wore a dress in a fashion show, uh, that I've wore high heels uh, for a fundraising event. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I, you know, I'm just willing to put it all out there and, and I am who I, I am and I, you know, I love to draw and you know, this Lenny Mae's New Friends book is the first book that I'm, you know, I'm putting out there but um, you know, I wrote a book years ago that a lot of people didn't know, a kid's book. Um, gosh, I think I was in high school when I wrote it about why, it was called Why Am I So Different? That was two years ago. And it was, yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a giraffe that, you know, went to school with um, a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> and, you know, it was, again, based off of me growing up being so much taller than everyone else. But, yeah. But, yeah, so I, I just, I like to have fun. Um, you know, I just, I want to have an impact on people any way that I can. It sounds like you've always had that about you. Have an impact on people. So yeah. write a book in high school. And yeah, I mean, it was just one of those things that you know was instilled in me. I grew up yeah. in a, a family that was very giving. You know, my parents sacrificed a lot for me to travel and play basketball when I was a kid. I mean, I can remember my my dad's six foot six, mm -hmm. and you know, and I was you know six foot seven, six foot eight at the time, and and along with my mother, the three of us would pack into this little S10 truck. 
um, you know, manual shift, the three of us would cram in there and we'd drive all over the Midwest for basketball tournaments. Wow. And, you know, they're, high they're, school? Yeah, I mean, pro starting probably when I was in junior high up through high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there wasn't any, you know, complaining. You know, my parents were more than willing to sacrifice their weekends, their time for me to do what I love. And, and that's just my family as a whole. You know, that fam family dynamic, family's always been big, they've always been there. And they really instilled those values in me that, that you know, we should care about each other mm -hmm. and, and really try to make a difference and, and maybe be the light in, you know, in a life of darkness for others. So, so how far were you from being in the NBA? Well I, well, I mean, I had two offers to play professional basketball overseas mm -hmm. um, that my wife didn't even know about. Uh -oh. um, when I first got the offers, because you know I had a lot of ankle problems, a lot of injuries in college. I played basketball at Central Michigan University, and we had gotten married. Our first daughter was on the way, and, and I had a couple of offers to play, one in Australia and one in Denmark. Mm -hmm. And I actually turned them down without ever even telling my wife um, wow. that I had the offers. Uh, one, I just didn't feel like it was it would be good to take my wife and, and a newborn baby over to these countries and play basketball. I had a lot of injuries and was starting to question if I wanted to continue to play. So I did have a couple opportunities to play professionally, but you know, obviously, you know, not, not never really close to the NBA. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the most important thing is like, how do people get hold of you? What's the blog and what's the yeah, it's impact52.org is our blog site, mm -hmm. and you know they can find information about us as a family. They can read our stories. They can learn about a lot. Every nonprofit organization that we volunteered with, there's a link to their website, mm -hmm. what they do. So yeah. again, our hope is that if people say, "Wow, I'm looking for an organization that helps animals," mm -hmm. that they could come to our site, find some organizations. Mm -hmm click to their website, read our blog posts, and then maybe get involved. So impact52.org. They can also follow us on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, we have an Impact 52 Twitter page. We also have an Impact 52 Facebook page so people can, can, can join in the conversation. Come volunteer with us. Mm -hmm. Be a part of what we're trying to do. We, we'd love to have people. So now if when people go to your blog, mm -hmm. they can find your Kickstarter inf information yes. and all yep. your stuff. Yep, the Kickstarter, we, I think we're down to four or five days. Mm -hmm. uh, left on our Kickstarter, we're, we're just a few hundred dollars short of our goal at this point. Mm -hmm. um, the ebook is done, mm -hmm. or will be done, hopefully over the next couple days. As for, so digitally, it'll be out there hopefully this month. Mm -hmm. And the Kickstarter funds are really to help us get books printed mm -hmm. so that we can get them in the hands of kids. So yeah, there's we have a page dedicated to the book on the blog, and someone can read, see pictures of the story, and then there's a link to click the Kickstarter if they wanted to make a pledge of five dollars, you know, a dollar. I mean, we have some rewards. They want copies of the book, you know, depending on how what level they donate at. There, there are rewards, but they can find all that information at our at our blog at impact52.org. So we would like to thank Aaron for coming yes. and joining us thank today, you very much. and we would like to thank you, the audience. For listening in, um, we are recording at LaSalle Bed and Breakfast, downtown Fort Wayne. And uh, please go to his website and support the project. And this is Monday Morning Jolt. Use it.